What is up everyone? Katie from MB Tennis. Hope you guys are doing awesome today. What do we have for you guys? The Head Broom Boom, excuse me, Pro. So, I'm gonna be talking about this one today for you guys. Interesting frame to say the least. I think it uh, definitely has uh, a, a spot in the market. Before we get any further, like and subscribe folks come on let's get it let's keep building the subs up we got lots of content coming your way lots of ideas that i've been writing down and if you guys got any ideas feel free to write them down in the comments below uh, we're heading to the itas uh, which is a big college tournament at the u.s open like we did last year hoping to get some good footage there for you guys so yeah lots of good stuff coming up so stay tuned for that like and subscribe but back to the video, Head Boom Pro, first impressions, the colorway. Uh, I can't say I love the colors. I look, I look at it sometimes and I'm like, that's one sexy racket. And the next time I look at it and I'm like, like you can't even see. Like, well, I don't know why they have the big B here and then B O O. I don't know, I just I don't understand. But um, I mean, it's okay. This is, you know, the boom line is. Uh, the Coco Goth, you know, line. I'm not sure if she uses exactly a boom racket. We'll have to figure that out. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below because as it is for many female and male tennis players uh, on the Pro Tour, they don't use the rackets they endorse. Fun fact, hopefully I didn't like burst your bubble there and like all you guys got like pro staffs, you know, not like Rieger and Roger don't use those exact molds or Rafa doesn't use them from Pure Arrow. Anyway, this is the Boom Pro I got for you guys. It's got that new Auxetic technology that all the head, you know, uh, head frames are getting put in. And I can tell you that this racket, if I could say like one word about it, it would be like, it's pretty good. Um, this racket, I think a lot of people will enjoy because it's like a midline between a pure arrow, pure drive, um, extreme tour-ish realm, um, maybe even like a blade 1619 B core-ish. It's kind of sitting in between all of those. So it's not super powerful, but it's not as controlled as say even an extreme tour in my opinion. Um, I kind of like where they're going though with this kind of isometric. Um, Brain, uh, just because it's challenging Yonex a bit, I mean, they're the only ones that have really given it a go, and I think this racket is kind of having some success at it. There's a lot of people that are buying it, so way to go head. So if we really get to the nitty gritty stuff here, it feels nice in the hand, the grip feels nice, perfectly normal, feels good uh, holding it in the hands. But yeah, if we back up, you know, hitting from the baseline, feels not too bad, solid on the cross courts and the forehand, this actually felt very nice on forehand, like arguably even maybe better than my extreme or the new extreme. Um, I felt like I was really able to like, maybe not a good thing, but like when I was slapping a bit, if I would go for a slap, it felt like really crispy. So like I enjoyed the flat hits with this. And you know, when I went for top spin, it felt pretty good too. The one thing that is making it more like a power frame is that I am able to go for those slaps and sometimes it flies. So, of course, this is me comparing it to my current frame or if you're somebody like a Prestige or like a Blade 1820 here. Rackets like that, this one's gonna feel more powerful. So, but if you're coming from like the Pure Air Pure Drive stuff, uh, this is gonna feel more controlled. So it's just all where you are. For me personally, it felt like I was flying a little bit, a little bit just because of what I'm used to. Um, but eventually I would get used to it. I would be able to figure it out. But just for my personal liking on forehand, sometimes it was flying. Um, but yeah, overall it felt very crispy. I didn't actually feel like I needed to add weight anywhere. On a side note, maybe I would in the future, but in general, it felt you know, pretty good. So forehands, you know, we'll give it a check mark. Uh, if we move over to backhand, um, 
didn't have the feel uh, that I have with my Extreme Torn back end. It just felt a little weak at times when I would really go and step in, but that could be because I don't have weight, extra weight. I have weight on my Extremes. Um, so that can be a, a factor too, you know. When you're playing at higher levels, you know, you have generally weight distributed. A lot of guys do that, and girls as well. Pro Tour guys and girls do that well. They got customized rackets, so. Um, it, it felt it felt good on back end, but nothing special. It definitely felt like a downgrade to me compared to my extremes. But um, for me, I probably wouldn't give it a check mark. But I would say it's average. It's okay. If we're moving up to the net uh, volleys, at one point I couldn't get a volley over the net. I don't know what happened. Uh, I think I have some video of that, so maybe we can show that right now, just as like a, an LOL sort of moment. Uh, I just couldn't get the volleys in at all. There was like five volleys I missed in a row, and then I was kind of fine. But I felt like I didn't have that feel. It didn't have the feel that I wanted because it felt more like a power frame. Uh, I guess it, that's why they call it the head boom. So, I mean, what am I saying? Of course, it's not going to have a feel like a prestige or an extreme or uh, like the extreme tour, rather. Uh, but it felt Meh. It felt meh in my opinion up at the net. I enjoyed it. It wasn't like any red flags other than those like first five volleys I missed in the net because I was fine after that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it felt meh <laughs> up at the net, like nothing special. Um, if we go to overheads, didn't have any problems with those. Uh, felt pretty clean on contact. Um, yeah, so backing up to serve. Uh, Felt pretty good on serve, nothing special though. Like I thought this was gonna be like a great racket for serving, I don't know why I thought that, but you know, head boom. Like, it just sounds like a good serving racket. Um, and it's not to say that it was bad, because it definitely wasn't, it was just meh. So, I mean, it's hard to say, like, kick serve was solid, slice serve was solid, I was able to create the spins. Um, that I do with my racket, unlike maybe some other rackets, uh, head, head Pro True Pro No, had some trouble with that, but uh, yeah, I was able to do all the things that I do with my racket, but just didn't feel as good. I think feel is so important, because your racket needs to feel good in your hands, even if you're able to do the things that you can with certain rackets, but it doesn't feel good, that's really important, I think. Um, so, I give it a check mark on serve, because it, it did feel okay. Uh, but yeah, returns is kind of where it got a little meh, a little bit more than meh uh, in a bad way. I felt like I was just like, it felt dungy. I didn't know where it was going. Um, but this is also a frame, like I'm getting serves that are hit at me pretty hard. Like if you're a club player, this is probably a great racket and I'll kind of get into that a little bit more. So I don't want you guys to think like, oh my God, Headroom Pro is such a, bleep, 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 you know, racket, bad racket. It's not, it's definitely not. It's a good frame. Um, it just, I don't think it's fitting my game style necessarily. As funny enough, I thought it would, but it just really didn't. So on returns, it was nothing special. Um, but yeah, anyway, to, to kind of wrap it up, I think you could, I think it would be interesting to play around with adding some weight in the hoop just to have more feel, have some more weight up on the backhand side, up at the net. I think that could be that could be a recipe for, for some greatness, recipe for greatness. Um, and I, and I, re I really enjoyed it on the forehand, like I said. I think this racket is definitely, anybody can kind of play with this. I feel like if you put some weight on it, you customize it a bit, you can hand it to a pro, pro player and they would enjoy it. But I also think, you know, you could hand this to, you know, a 16-year-old, 15-year-old, and they could play with the ball with it as well. Um, I probably wouldn't hand this to, like, a 12-year-old, just because I think it might be a little bit too heavy. You know, you're getting, like, I think it's about 11 ounces uh, on scrum. Yeah, like, 310. Might be a little bit heavy for some of those younger kids. Um, but if you're an adult and you want to spend a little bit of money on a racket, this could be definitely a good one. Um, yeah, and I said some things that I didn't most, I said a lot of more, maybe more negative things. I think it's just maybe average. Like, 
I was hoping, maybe it's because I got my hopes up, I just hoped it would be maybe a little bit better. Um, I mean, it's got this unique colorway, they got the isometric, you know, shape up here. Um, but you know what? I like where they're going with this. I would be really interested to try the version that comes out after this because I think they're going to be able to get a lot of good feedback on this one. Um, and definitely a racket to try. It's unique. It's very unique. So I encourage everybody, like I say in all my racket reviews, you got to go try rackets. You got you to gotta, you gotta see what's out there because then you'll know what you like. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. If I could sum it up in one word, average. I think it's a very average racket and, and worth a demo. Some people might be getting mad at me in the comments, so don't do that because somebody might love this racket, but then there might also be somebody that hates it, hates it, hates it, hates it. So uh, I'm definitely not one of those people. I, like I just said, it's just kind of average. So definitely a good demo. Enjoyed hitting with it. Try it out. Let me know what you guys think. And thanks for stopping by. Uh, listening to my voice in Epi Tennis, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the next video.